Hello, episode number eight of Germain Rochebe's studies called Shannon Ross, The Rose Garden of Mysteries. In this episode, we are going to discuss a part of a poem in which Sheikh Mahmoud Shabestari is discussing how the mystic, through intuitive knowledge, gets the knowledge of God, this knowledge of the real. So please bear with me. I'm going to first read the entire poem in Persian and um, then we are going to analyze it line by line and step by step and, I, and I'm reading it entirely in Persian because I want you to realize the rhythm in the original language of this poem. دلی که از معرفت نور و صفا دید ز هر چیزی که دید اول خدا دید بود فکر نکو را شرط تجرید پس آنگه لمعی از برق تعیید هران کس را که ایزد راه ننموند ز استعمال منطق هیچ نکشود Now let's analyze this beautiful poem step by step So in the last episode we said that um, although uh, rational thinking, um, logic, philosophy is important, uh, but it is the first step, like getting through uh, this step, another step should be taken, which is the subject matter of this video. And if you remember, uh, the last line, the last verse that we analyzed was uh, something about Prophet Moses. Sheikh Mahmoud told us, راه دور و دراز استان, رها کن, چون موسا یک زمان ترک اصا کن. That is, rational thinking is a long way and a far destination to arrive. Um, of course, he's talking about getting uh, divine knowledge. He says, like Moses, let go of the stick in your hand, which we interpreted as the case in which like uh, Moses were going to Pharaoh, uh, but Pharaoh was not listening to him. Uh, through rational conversation, uh, whatever Moses was telling him, and he didn't just accept it until he got a point, um, the three miracle, uh, God says to Moses, throw your stick on the ground, and that uh, the rest of the story, as you know. So this line says, until Moses was using rational thinking, uh, Pharaoh was not uh, listening to him, but after he dropped rational thinking and uh, he got into intuitive knowledge and um, using it, manifesting it uh, through that stick, uh, he got to a more compelling approach in front of Pharaoh. In the next line, uh, Sheikh Mahmoud says, Dara dar wadi ayman kenagah dirakhti guyadat inni an al-haq. And then he says, Muhaqqiq ra ke wahdat dar shuhud ast, nukhustin nazre dar nur wujud ast. Deli ke az ma'rifat nur o safa deed, zahar chizdi ke deed, awal khuda deed. So what, what he's discussing here is... Uh, this, like a literal translation of the first line that I, that I read would be, um, enter the safe land, enter the safe space, uh, in which a tree tells you an al-haq, inni an al-haq. That is, indeed, I am the truth. Both alluding to Mansur al and his famous an al-haq, and at the same time referring to chronic verses where uh, Moses gets to meet God through a tree. Sheikh Mahmoud is saying that um, through cleansing of your soul, like decorating your soul with moral beauties, uh, with human beauties, with religious beauties, um, through those do's and don'ts that you get to learn through a divine law, uh, you get to a level where the, light, where the light of the real shines upon your soul, shines upon your heart. And this way, the covers go away and what you see is the real manifesting himself uh, through the corporeal and non-corporeal entities. It's not that people who get to this level just look at the corporeal entities uh, concluding that, okay, these are entities and there is a God. It's just that whatever and um, wherever they look at, they see God, they see the, they, they see the real, and um, they understand that all the corporeal entities are basically contingent. They are not necessary. They cannot exist as such. 
their existence is dependent on that necessary existent. So wherever the mystic looks, he or she sees the face of the real. And this again is an allusion to Quran, where it says, wheresoever you turn, there is the face of God. And the mystic can get to a level um, where he or she sees the face of the real everywhere. Not just looking and inferring, not just looking at entities and uh, concluding that uh, there is a God who has created, but just seeing the real through the objects, seeing that these objects are reflections of manifestations of one divine essence, and that's all. Uh, they do not exist in an essential way. They're contingent beings. They are but the reflections of one and one reality, which we call the divine essence. So wheresoever you turn your face, uh, you see those entities, you see the things in this world saying, Inni an al -haq. Indeed, I am the truth. Not the essence, but reflections, but manifestations. And the third line that we read could be translated as a heart that through the divine knowledge has been cleansed by divine light. Uh, wherever it looks, first it sees God. So here, uh, the Sheikh uh, is alluding to something. I'm not going to open up uh, that much. Like It's a longer discussion. But um, we said previously that um, when the mystic looks at the entities, the corporeal entities, um, he or she sees God. But uh, they are like uh, the different uh, expressions of this, uh, of this sight in the literature. For example, there are those who just looking at uh, the corporeal entities they realize that these are basically they first see the entities and uh, he realizes that these entities are masks of a hidden reality so first comes the entities then come um, then comes the real there are other people who um, as this line refers to uh, wherever they look first they see god they don't see the entities and behind them the real first they see the real and um, they see the real manifest uh, through the divine intuition, through the divine unveiling. Um, so they see the real as manifest and the created as uh, the hidden, right? The opposite of what we see with our eyes, that we see the entities as manifest and the real, uh, we conclude or we infer uh, the real as the, uh, as the interior. For that mystic who gets to that level, uh, the, the, the role is reversed, and, you know, wherever he or she looks at, the real is the apparent. Uh, in the following line, um, he opens something very interesting. He says, Bovat fikre nekura shart tajrid, pasangah lam'i as barge ta'id. So, literal translation would be, Bovat fikre nekura shart tajrid, to have a decent reflection first you have to do some isolations but what does he mean by those by, by that isolation as you remember the sheikh started this section by uh, categorizing reflection and analyzing it from two aspects one from the aspect of uh, people of intuition and the other from the perspective of uh, rational thinkers so uh, for rational thinkers to arrive at a conclusion there were some obstacles that they need to overcome to arrive at a conclusion like uh, syllogism, uh, moving from premises to conclusions, assumptions being there, and also uh, the other aspects of, uh, of this process, like uh, the student or the, uh, or the person who's working on our rational thinking to arrive at a conclusion, they also should be focused, they should put their work in priority. So basically there are things that need to overcome uh, to, to get this job done. And um, for people of intuition, uh, there are also obstacles, um, but these obstacles are other than what I just said. Uh, there, there, there is another dimension to it. And the dimension is this, like for such people, they have to get, get rid of obstacles, both uh, uh, in appearance and spiritually. So on appearance uh, in their worldly life, what they should do is to not be obsessively engaged with the material things, with the material world, with the extravagant way of life. Again, we have discussed this before, there's in Islamic intellectual tradition, you are not required to live an ascetic life on the mountains. You live your social life. Uh, you live actually a material life too, but in a controlled way, as much as it is necessary for you. 
so basically Islamic mysticism says don't live an extravagant life put your focus in spirituality not uh, on the material things so um, the, the mystic getting back here um, should get rid of those obstacles material life material thought uh, impure thoughts impure thinkings intentions so on on, on the other side um, in his or her heart the mystic must throw away anything that hinders the divine light being there anything in your heart that uh, shares the room with god so the mystic gets to a level uh, where there is only the beloved in his heart so what is happening is um, the mystic cleanses his heart of the obstacles of any obstacle that keeps him away keeps him far from god anything anyone any thought that hinders uh, the mystic remembering god focusing on god so if there is any such thing that should be thrown out of the heart then the second part of that line said uh, and the line following that says so uh, we said that uh, the, the person the traveler the welfare should uh, get rid of the obstacles uh, then the sheikh says and that even getting rid of those obstacles is not enough there should also be a divine approval uh, so he says there should be let's say a beam of um, divine light as, as an approval um, so where, where, where the real sees you fit and ready to, to, to receive the knowledge um, that you are seeking. Connecting this with the line uh, that comes after it. So uh, the Sheikh is saying that um, only obstacles, removing obstacles is not enough. And only logic and rational thinking is not enough. So there should be divine guidance. And unless the divine light guides you in this process, uh, you cannot get to the destination of attaining true knowledge of God through rational thinking. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, if you liked, please press that like button. It's going to help the channel. I'm looking forward to be with you in the next episode.